I hope you're getting this because I'm not sure if I actually did this right or if the timer's running. So I'm going to be talking meaningless jabber, Waki, until I actually think that the camera is going. And then if it is already going, then you're just hearing a lot of jabber walkie <laughs> or jabber talkie. Or in this case, we're calling it selfie two. Hey, all right. We're making progress. The Amazon uh, Kindle that we got for 49 bucks, pretty good deal, is uh, kind of challenging for me because everything is made for people that probably are less computer literate, maybe more phone literate, maybe more smart tablet or smartphone. Either way, it's just a little bit challenging for me, so it's kind of been a while since we've had a selfie go, and this is like selfie two because we made some progress. Now we've gone out and we practiced with the Mississippi, which is the Sea Eagle 370, and did pretty good. I recorded a selfie just recently about it, but the phone shut me off, so I don't know if the what the settings are or if it's limited, so we're going to make this selfie short. Maybe. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> so hopefully it won't get wiped out. But um, anyways, the point being is that we've made some progress. We've gotten some flotation tests on the Sea Eagle. We've done some decision making on the Kayak Canoe. The Kayak Canoe right now I'm seated in and I'm currently packing it and getting it all organized so that I can set it up, take a film of it, and detail out all the equipment for kayak and then also for the Mississippi River Run, both web pages, so people can kind of have an idea of what gear I take because I oversupply, I overstock, and pretty much plan on carrying everything I need. Other people seem to accumulate it along the way, or they buy it at stores, or they keep a minimalist kind of kayaking experience. Now, I'm not kind of doing that. I'm more like a Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn kind of guy. So I have a frame that I'm just missing a few more pieces, but the framework will make a covering for me so that when it's raining, if I want to, I can put up just the cover on the top, which I have both a sail cover and a rain, a heavy duty, weatherproof, hard, I mean, well, it's not hard, but it's cloth material that's sturdy. It's what the seagull's made out of. And um, I can still paddle, you know, because it's got room for paddling. And so I could do it either way. And I could use it for a sun later as I get farther down the Mississippi. But I'm told there's a lot of wind. So likewise, this framework that I have also holds the masthead behind where the camera is right now for the sail. And I have a square sail. Nice square sail. I mean, wow. I was kind of like... Boy, is this interesting. So now I have to buy a few more pieces of PVC pipe to reinforce it. Because what we do is we take a PVC and we actually build a frame on top of the boat. So that way the kayak canoe becomes like a canoe in a way with a shell on top. That's an exo frame for a masthead and for the square sail to be up there in front, which is a downwind sail. And I'll be able to control it with, you know, using the paddle because this kayak is very easy to turn right or left, so the kayak canoe, this one specifically, is easier to use. One of the things I wanted to bring up also is kind of interesting is that I'm hearing a lot of people tell me about, you know, well, I should get a 17-foot, you know, hard shell, long kind of kayak. There's a lot of different kinds of kayaks out there. There's a wide variety of people that do a lot of different things in kayaks. There's even squirting kayaks that go underwater and then squirt back up and then go underwater. And you've seen some of those little midget kayaks, you know, that are hard shell you've seen. And they kind of sit in the river and they play in the, you know, like white water and they do rolls and they do jumps and spins. And some people have taken them even snow kayaking. And that's not my kind of kayaking. Kayak canoe, so you know, is a cross between a kayak and a canoe. So my kayak canoe, the name, is based upon that. It's kind of a mixture because it's an open cockpit kayak. What that means is that it's a umiak, not a kayak. An umiak is traditionally 
one that's used for women and families. But the kayak was for the hunters and the men. They would take a, you know, build a frame that was customized for their weight and their size and just who they are. And they would customize it just right for the frame and then they would stretch animal hides around it so that it fit the man and the man fit the boat. Not bad for this kayak canoe because we kind of cross between that. This has been a modified Intex K2 Explorer, but it's been greatly modified and I'm still working on some other things that I want to do. I've noticed that there are a lot of like inflatable floors, you know, that are put into kayaks. I've noticed they're going towards some real hard shell kind of inflatable material. So I've decided, you know what, I'm just going to make the outside of my kayak hard shell like they're doing. Maybe some cloth or maybe some Gorilla Tape. <laughs> So who knows what I may do before I actually hit the Mississippi. But we have a lot of gear that actually is hand accessible. Like right here I have tied onto my, my boat chair that's uh, larger than uh, normal size because it's made for fishing. Right here I have my siphon pump so I could just reach down and siphon any water out immediately. Even though this kayak, we tested it and we tested the uh, Sea Eagle and we filled it full of water and it floats. It's still easy to kayak, believe it or not, when it's full of water because the floor has five tubes that are full of air and then two big tubes on the side. Pontoon boats are a little different and other boats are a little different and a canoe obviously is a lot different. You don't want to fill up a canoe full of water. But they make inflatable canoes now, or at least Sea Eagle does, and I don't know if it would might float when it's full of water. I'm not sure. But my... Uh, Kayak canoe, the thing I like about it is that even if I tipped it over, I could sit on top of it. Yeah, really. I did it on the Sea Eagle and I've done it on this one too. Now, I'll admit if it was in rapids, that'd be a problem. But just out on, you know, a river that has a stream you know, going, hey, it's a safety feature. Now, I also have a cargo net that's wrapped around the boat. So, really, it holds a lot of cargo. I mean, this is rated for 400 pounds and... I'm probably going to carry, oh, the other one's 690, I think, or 600 pounds. So I'm going to carry a lot of weight. You know, I'm carrying about 500 pounds of, of uh, cargo or more because I plan on carrying a lot of food. I get hungry <laughs> and water. And I don't really want to stop. You know, I mean, yeah, I'll stop to camp out. But, you know, I'm camping out not because I need to go to the store. And I've heard of a lot of these expeditions that are doing that. They have these, you know, like refill centers or they stop at some campground and go walking into, you know, the store to buy food and stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm okay with that, but you know, it's not my style. So I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And that's why we've been doing these selfies because selfie is about me doing what I want to do. <laughs> so we've been adding a lot of things to our gear. So we have, you know, our, our kayak paddle gloves. We have our warm liners for obviously when we start off in May, it's going to be pretty cold. And then I also have some winter gloves that are waterproof that you know probably be wearing all three when I first start, you know, kayaking because it's going to be pretty cold. Then I'll have a long body suit, body glove on, and a bunch of clothes, and probably look like an Eskimo. <laughs> I mean. I, people were telling me it's pretty cold at that time of year so you should be careful and I was thinking that's when kayaks were invented was in the cold weather they used them out in the ice of Alaska and the Nupik and Nupiak and Nupik Indians natives but you know there's not that many Eskimos so just so you know you know it's like you may want to examine your tribes so you know how many tribes there are in Alaska like 32 or more different distinctive tribes and native tongues but the point being is that winter is a good time to go so I'm going maybe not winter exactly but it'll be cold at night you know and it'll be you know sunny hopefully in the beginning but then I guess it warms up fast up in Minnesota I've never been there so I don't know but I've been to Alaska so I figure I know a little bit about cold so hopefully we're planned out um, the next selfie we're gonna try to pan all the gear and this kayak canoe, the main boat that's going to be pulling the Sea Eagle 330. Now the Sea Eagle 330 is a foot longer than my kayak canoe. My kayak canoe is only, I think it's 11 feet, 
no, maybe it's 10 feet, and the Sea Eagle 330 is 11 feet, and the Sea Eagle 370 my wife has is 12 feet. But the interesting thing is that inside the cabin space or the open cockpit, my Sea Eagle is one foot shorter than my kayak canoe. It's got a big nose, I guess, for cargo, and so we're using it as a cargo boat. But the interior cabin, this is a foot longer than the Sea Eagle, even though the Sea Eagle has better material, you know, Kevlar, some kind of Kevlar 30 mix cloth material that inflates or whatever. Anyway, who knows? This is uh, 30 vinyl, vinyl 30. And so it's pretty good. You know, it's got been punctured, so I've repaired it, even on a Green River run. So I'm ready to pair, repair it again. Yeah, I pretty figure it's going to get holes. You know. So I got... I forget where it is already, but I got a lot of repair kits in the chairs, hanging from the boat. I got patches everywhere, <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> Just we'll pull over and patch it, and then keep going. You know, that's what our, all of our gorilla tape is for. You put a patch on it, and you put gorilla tape over it, and you're on your way. <laughs> and then it'll settle, you know, and it'll set. But, you know, to start, start with, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you just want to slap that sucker on there and get going, or, you know, hopefully not be trapped too long. But... Our whole plan, rather than be like wealthy people, we're kind of going like poor people. You know, we're not in a hurry to get down the Mississippi River and check it off our bucket list. But I'm planning on going down the Mississippi River solo, pulling my other kayak, you know, and, you know, meeting people, yeah, you know, recording videos, yeah, you know, that too. About 90 of them, which in four or five months is pretty easy to do. But, you know, at the same time, you know, enjoying God, enjoying, really, the ability to get out, get away, sort of get unplugged. <laughs> Can't get too unplugged, got to watch the for the weather report. Weather, <laughs> the wind's blowing. And I got to watch for, I guess, you know, farther down the Mississippi, I got to watch for barges. Now, we used to have barges going to Alaska, so, you know, it's not quite the same. We had container boats or container ships, but... It's not the same, but it's pretty close. So I kind of get it. And I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure prepared. But I just wanted to share this with you so that you, if you're into kayaking, don't worry about the expensive boats to start with. You can get something that's as cheap as 90 bucks, which is what this kayak cost. My yellow Intex 2 K2 is $99 right now at rubberboats.com. And um, it's made by Intex, which is kind of a toy gaming kind of thing. And um, it works great. It's a fantastic boat. You know, the other ones work good too. The, the K1, I think it's called. or They're not the Explorer, but they're the Expedition. I don't know what they're called. But they're green ones, you know. And they, they're kind of fun. I've, I've played in one, you know. I mean, I'm not sure I'd take it down to Mississippi, but I, I don't know. Maybe it could. This one, we'll see. If I have to bail, I have a backup plan. I'm probably going to bring a raft also in my other uh, Sea Eagle because I have a Sterilite that this camera is sitting on, Tupperware container. That's my cargo hold. And my cargo hold holds 30 gallons of gear. I have two other cargo holds that are also in my other kayak that when I have to portage, I also have a dolly to haul everything and I can put the kayaks, even if I, you know, if I didn't have so much gear, I could put them inside the Tupperware containers. Yeah, you know, I can deflate them so it's pretty easy to carry, but fully inflated, they're real easy to carry. They're really light. I mean, it's pretty amazing. So whenever I get to portage areas, I'm in no hurry. You know, if it takes me an hour, two hours, a day, it doesn't bother me. You know, I'm in no hurry on the Mississippi. So when we leave in May, you might not see me until Christmas. No, I'm kidding. My wife would kill me, but she, she wouldn't be surprised. But no, I'm, I'm kind of thinking like May, June, July, August. You know, September probably, you know, is about the soonest I'll get done. You know, it could extend to October, but I doubt it. But, you know, I plan on turning 60 on Old Man River. And I plan on having God show me that I become an old man at 60 that I've always kind of not really realized that I've gotten older. Because my 50s went by pretty easy. I mean, it felt like they were 40s and 30s. I wasn't really out of energy or out of strength or 
not able to do everything I wanted to until I hit about 59. And this last year has been kind of kind of challenging now. There have been some things that I realized, you know, I really can't do that. And I'm strong enough, but I just don't want to do that. You know, and so I guess I'm becoming an old man. So I'm starting to look at things a little bit differently. So I think at 60 with my birthday on the river in August, I'm going to acknowledge that with Old Man River, I'm an old man on Old Man River. <laughs> now, I have acknowledged this last year that I look kind of old in the mirror. I went, man, I, see, I don't look at myself in the mirror a lot. You know, I know a lot of people do. You know, they get up in the morning and they're doing all their, they spend a half hour on their face or something, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever they do. For me, it's like, I don't like looking in the mirror, you know, not because I don't like looking at me. I'm just not, you know, I'm not into me, you know, that's just, even though I'm doing a selfie too, just not me. But point being said, all being done, everything being equal, the Lord is going to bless this journey. In some ways, I have no idea what to expect. So I'm taking everything and planning for it, just in case. So whatever it may be that God has in store, I'm looking forward to it. How about you? You could probably go out and get yourself a cheap kayak and play in the lakes and the rivers. I've been on a class three with this yellow one, so it's, you know, I mean, it's, it can do it, but you know, be careful. You need skill sets to handle class three. Class two and class one rapids are fine. Class three can be challenging. You gotta remember, stay in the boat. <laughs> the boat floats, so you don't. Stay in the boat, don't fall out of the boat. Make yourself like part of the fixtures of the boat. <laughs> That's one thing I haven't figured out yet. I'm still kind of like a little bit, you know, tentative in the boat when it comes to like tipping over and stuff. I kind of tilt, you know, I haven't fallen out yet and tilted it over. I'm planning on doing it on purpose soon so that I get the hang of it. I did lose it in the, you know, uh, class three, almost class four rapids up in um, Green River, but that's because I hit a boulder sideways, you know, I mean, it just, the current smashed me against this giant boulder and, you know, there was a hole there and it sucked me under in a vortex, but that's kind of like unexpected. That's not normal. I mean, it does happen, but it's not too normal. Try to avoid those things. They could kill you. But anyways, the point being said, everything else is easy. We've gone to reservoirs and rivers, my wife and I, and you've probably seen it on Facebook, on Kayak Canoe, or on you know my Facebook page. But God wants you to enjoy what it is you do, whether it be the trials, the tribulations, like James says, count it all joy, or whether it be just waking up in the morning and thanking God that you're alive. Because you have an eternity to live. You might as well get used to the idea that every day you're living it with God, not without Him. So I pray and I hope that you're a Christian watching this, because if you're not, well, you'll still have eternity, but you just won't enjoy it. Not like the rest of us. You'll be in hell. So I pray that you'll get your act together and life together, and maybe you'll figure it out as I'm recording these selfies or kayaking news, but really it's not that hard a thing to get saved. I mean, dude, just call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. I mean, God will work on you and get you to the place. I mean, if you got to go to church and do some kind of altar call, then go. You know, get it over with. Get done with it and try it. See if you like it. If you don't, okay, fine. But if you do, hey, you just go with what God tells you to do. So, really, I kind of enjoy this epic era in my life where I get to enjoy what it is that God's employing in my life. Whether it's trials, who cares? Whether it's tribulation, so what? Whether it's pain or suffering, yeah, I've been there, done that lots of times. Or whether it's enjoying the river, going from Minnesota upward north a little bit because it curls from Lake Itasca, curling north, then going south all the way down Old Man River till I get to past New Orleans, you know, to the mouth of the river. And then I'll probably have to make my way back to New Orleans because I don't know if my wife will meet me down there. <laughs> She'll probably meet me in New Orleans, but not, not the mouth of the river. But, you know, you should be able to work that one out by then. So, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May the Lord our God make his face not only to shine upon you, but that you recognize what it is he's doing with you, in you, and for you. Because if you do, then you will be blessed. If you don't, then it's just going to be a test of your faith until you learn patience and then once you've let patience have its perfect work you'll discover that God was blessing you all along.